All right, hello and welcome to this whiteboard lesson. Guys, it's been a while, so it's time for me to sprinkle on a little freshness and give you this brand new whiteboard. Plus, I was going out to dinner here in just a little bit, so I kind of got all dolled up and thought, hey, this is whiteboard material. So here I am with a brand new whiteboard lesson. All kidding aside, before we get started with this lesson, if you guys need help with your trading, take a moment, click this link right here. It'll take you right to our live trade room and you can start trading with us right away. Also, if you like the video, please click that you like it. And also subscribe to the channel. Keep up to date with the whiteboard lessons that we do, the happy hours that I'll do once a week, as well as my market review and recap. So let's get into it because here's the question. Here's the questions. What? What are those secret indicators the professional traders hold so dearly to their heart that they don't want you to know about? What is that secret magical indicator? What is the best indicator to use for trading? What is it? You guys want to know that answer, but maybe you don't want to know the answer I have to give you. Maybe you won't like what I have to say, but I'm going to tell you the truth because that's what I've always promised. So let's just talk about it. What are the best indicators to use for trading? What are the most valuable ones? Now, my viewpoint might be completely different, but again, I'm two decades into this as a career. So trust me when I say this is probably the right area for you to go in, because I know when we first start out and we're struggling, especially we're desperate to think that there has to be some sort of a secret out there. There has to be something that somebody is holding back from us. That's the reason that we can't be successful. And in truth, there's no such thing. There's absolutely no such thing. You guys have been trading with me for a while. Those in the trade room, you already know, I talk about this all the time. There's no such thing as a magical indicator. So the very first thing that we're going to talk about here today, what is the best indicator for you? Plain and simple. It's these right here, your eyes. See, one of the more difficult things and the challenging things I should say about trading is it's not one of those rags to riches kind of businesses where you're just going to make a million dollars overnight. I know you see that a lot on infomercials. You probably saw something like that before you clicked onto this, these commercials and such. But the reason that every trader needs, I'm not saying it's going to take you a lifetime to be successful or several years, but you're going to have to spend a fair amount of time just looking and observing and paying attention to the market. Indicators are one thing, but how the market itself behaves is a completely different story. I mean, when you trade and you trade on a regular basis, one of the things you learn, and I have talked about this in past whiteboards, is that stocks and the market has a specific behavior to itself. So each and every one of us have to go through this learning curve where we're students of the market and we're observers of the market. That doesn't mean you can't make money being a, an observer. I'm not just saying stare at it and do nothing, but you will learn by continually looking at stocks, how they bounce off of certain levels, how they react when they do that, whether they gap up, whether they gap down, how they trade to one number, how they get rejected, whether they pull back, how they're affected by certain news events, how they're affected by earnings and so on. So this is gonna be a period of time if you're really struggling you know, we'll all go through it, but you're going to have to have a, as much screen time as possible so you can just kind of learn what the market has to offer. Now, some of you might sit there and go, look, I don't want to stare at this thing for a couple of years. I want to kind of really get into it. Here's my suggestion. You can go to a lot of these brokerage accounts right now and you can do live playbacks. That sounds weird, a live playback. It's one of those weird things, but anyway. Thinkorswim has them, a bunch of brokers have them, but you can go back and pick any day, any month in the past, and you can rewind it and play it like it's actually live. This is something good for those who are out there that are working and you can't be around the computer all day. You want to spend an hour or two at night studying rather than just reading books and DVDs. I mean, those are great, but watch stocks and how they behave. It'll just give you a replay. You can kind of see how something works. It's great if you made a trade and you go back and you watch it, but I think that's one of the best learning tools. So number one indicator, kids, your eyes. Your eyes don't lie. That repetition in front of the market is what you're looking for. Now, I'm gonna go a little deeper than that because I'm just not gonna cop out and say, it's all your eyes and gut. I've talked about this one too. I'm going to put S and R to save my pathetic penmanship, the distance of writing this, but that is support and resistance. To me, this is the very single greatest indicator, hands down, period, all time, ever, is support and resistance. So if you're brand new to trading or you're brand new to charting and you ask yourself, what does he mean by support and resistance? 
This is what we use charts for, and this is what we use the, the main part of our focus when we're looking at charts and we're observing price action. You'll hear traders talk about price action. Price action is actually support and resistance. So what you're meaning here is stocks trade from one level to the next in most cases. So when a stock is rolling over, so to speak, slang for selling off and it's going downwards and you see this selling happening and you're wanting to know hey, when is this going to stop? It's most likely going to stop at a certain support area that's in the recent past or perhaps in the, in the, in the longer term past. But there will be a support level. There will be a specific number that the market is looking at. It's not a magic trick. It's not just a lucky guess, but there is a method to this madness. So when a stock is dropping rapidly, or even if it's dropping slowly, and the, and the question you want to ask yourself is, when will this stock stop selling off? One way to find out is that is where is the nearest support? Where is the most relevant place of support. Same way when a stock is going up, maybe you have profits in this stock. You guys ever been in a situation where you were like, hey, I don't know when I should sell this massive winner. Should I take this big gain right now or should I hang on to it? Is there more in it, right? Common question. And sometimes we make the right decision to hold. Other times we make the wrong decision and it comes back at us. Again, where would that answer be? It will be in resistance. So that stock normally should trade from the next level to the next period of resistance, whether that's in the recent past or a further distance in the past. But stocks normally trade from one level to the next. This is why to me support and resistance means everything. And when we take a deeper look at support and resistance, not only does it mean that, that it should trade to that level, but when a stock reaches a specific support level or a specific resistance level, you can often get the very next clue about what that stock or that financial instrument is going to be by how, by how it behaves at either its support or its resistance. So just knowing where the support and the resistance is one clue. The second clue is that when it gets to that spot, you want to observe again that price action. How does that instrument behave when it gets there? Is there buyers that come in at that support? Are there sellers that come in that at that resistance? And how aggressive are they? So one of the things that we like to do as well, we want to make, like I said, kind of hinted in the beginning, we want to make things more complicated than what they really are. And also when we're failing consistently, I'm not calling anybody out. Trust me, I failed for a good five, six years at this before I was ever successful. I didn't make a damn dime. I grenaded accounts. So you know, I'm not judging anybody. I'm just telling you straightforward. But one of the things that we like to look at when we're not successful is we think there's something that's being hitting hidden, that there's a secret, that the market's playing tricks on us, that it's rigged or something. It's not. There is actually, like I said, a method to its madness and the way that the market behaves. And everything in your life revolves around supports and resistance. So for you new guys out there, those that are just kind of a little bit slow here catching on, it's all a price valuation in somebody's mind where they want to buy something. So you can look at support and resistance like gasoline prices. What's the floor? in your area, which what was the cheapest amount of gas that you've seen in your neighborhood? And what's the highest amount of gas that you have seen in your neighborhood? That is support for that gas, that is resistance for that gas, so to speak. So it will trade within side of that price level, even if it's not stocks, it's just simple supply and demand support and resistance. So to me, that will be the very best indicator. If you have nothing that you can ever rely on, rely on that. Price is the most important thing. Now I'll do you one better than that. I know many of you are, are, are long-term followers of this channel, but anybody that's new that's cruising by, I'll try to put the link up here, but if you browse down from my channel, there is a 30 minute video on support and resistance only. It doesn't get any better. It's actually called the best video ever on support and resistance. I stand by that comment. So give it a look. Now, the next one, and I should say these are the ones that I like to use. That doesn't mean this is the holy grail. I'm just a guy out there who's trading stocks, found a way to be, found a way to be successful 15 years ago and sharing what I think are the most basic elements and the most important things when it comes to trading. But the next one I put up here is VWAP, volume weighted average price. I can go into a lengthy definition about this, but what it is, 
And when I'm talking about this indicator here, just if you have this, it's in every brokerage account, just click on it. There's no, no changes to it. You'll see there's some places to put any filters. I just use the straight, straightforward VWAP. Now, what this is, is a volume weighted average price. That's what it is. But what I think it is and the way I look at it is this is what the price should be, okay? So if you're looking at a stock and it's currently trading at 50 bucks intraday, or if it's on a daily chart, and then you have a VWAP at 49, this is where it probably should be. Now, does that mean it's a dollar overbought? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that's just something that's very minuscule. But this is what, based on the volume and based on the prices, what it should be trading at. The canny thing about this indicator is at some point, these two will connect in the future. Either the VWAP will catch up to the price of the stock or the price of the stock will come down and connect with the VWAP. Now, it's definitely, again, trading over and over again with your eyes, you will see how this indicator works. Is it the holy grail? Is it perfect every time? No, but there is enough viable information. It's also a widely used indicator, meaning that there are a lot of algorithmic programs. There's a lot of other traders that look for stocks that pull back, pull back meaning sell off. So maybe this thing was at $52 in the middle of the day, and then it slowly sold down and it got into the VWAP, and then you see this bounce, and everybody's like, hey, well, why did it bounce there? That must be news. Not necessarily. Maybe it's because it hit the VWAP. Maybe the VWAP was connected to support and resistance, right? So it all kind of ties itself together. So this is a great indicator that I like to use. I also, because I do a lot of reversal trading, I like to use that as my target. So when I look at VWAP, I say, stock should probably trade there, or the stock should trade up to that level or get pretty close. And then I'll combine it with support and resistance. And then the other ones is just basic, simple moving averages. And I like to use the 10, the 20, again, no holy grails here, just things I've used in experience, and the 200, okay? And I only use these bottom ones just for observations. In fact, I never make a decision really based off of these, but an exit. Never really an entry price. My entry prices come from mainly support and resistance, and my exits come from VWAP and the SMAs. It's just a little bit of information that may or may not help me make a decision. And those are the ones that I like to use. Now, is I don't use like the DMAs or the other type, just simple basic moving averages. And again, this is what the price should be trading at over that period. Now, I'll try to do this, explain this to you guys, give you just a small explanation. You can always Google it. But if it's a 10 moving average, it's on a five minute chart. That's what the average price of that stock or that's what the price of that stock is over the last 10 trading bars. If it's a daily chart, that's the average price over the last 10 days, last 20 days, 50 days, 200 days. Where this really becomes viable in my opinion is this line between the 200 and below is that any actually really the 50 is any time that you see protrusions let me use that word you see protrusions below this you start to see radical selling in the market so when you look back at market crashes or market corrections go back in december take a look at how that 200 day moving average played out when the market broke that look how aggressive it got so each one of these give you a clue so as I wrap this up, I know I talked quickly, but here's what I want everyone to know. There's no such thing as a magical indicator. It, it just does not exist. Everything has to be combined as only a reference point. It's just something that help you make a decision, either to get in on the stock, hold the stock, and, or get out of the stock. Because there will be several times your back will be against the wall, you will be tested, you'll be upset, you won't know if, if you should hold or fold or what your next move is. And maybe you can grab a clue from one of these moving averages. But always be careful not to overdo it. You don't want a cluttered mess on your chart. You don't want too many of these sophisticated super things here on your charts, making them look ugly and keeping you from making a decision. Like they say, paralysis through analysis. If you do too much of it, and you try to be too perfect, you won't do anything. Remember, everything starts with your eyes, what you see, 
Then it goes to support and resistance where buyers will step in and help a stock where sellers no longer want, where people want out of a stock and they begin to sell. You'll be able to pick up 99% of all the information you need about a stock right here at support and resistance. The rest of these, they're just like, you know, like, like salt on top of your fries. You're going to eat the fries anyway, but you'd like to have some salt on them, right? You know, it's like the cake with the icing. You're still going to eat the cake. But give me some icing, right? Just a little icing. So I hope this helped you guys out. As always, if you need help, visit the link in list.com. Click on the trade room tab. Until the next whiteboard, trade well and take care.